Thank you for tuning in to the UC San Diego Mi Camino student series, where we take a look at the diverse journeys of Latinx and Chicanx students. Today, we're having a conversation with Cesar Aceituno, a sociology major with a passion for education. Cesar has given back to the community through his work with CREATE, the Transfer Triton Hub, and his research as a McNair Scholar. Thank you for being here today, Cesar. Thank you for having me, Frank. I appreciate being here. To start, how about you share with our listeners where you're from and where your family is from? So I think it worked backwards. My family came to California from Guatemala and we resided in Los Angeles for most of my childhood until I transferred to UCSD and my family recently moved to Texas. So you are a transfer student. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about your transfer pathway to UC San Diego. So my transfer pathway may be similar or different, but I had originally attended Cal State LA, dropped out, went to community college for a year and a, a, a two years and a half. And um, I think it really helped find my passion. It really guided me to be like a, a, a scholar that I was supposed to be. And it really set like the the fundamentals uh, that led me up to that led me to go to UCSD. I feel like there was a lot of people who helped me along the way. There was definitely like supervisors and um, professors that I leaned on in a community college that really supported me through through this process. I was in a UCLA program called Triple CP, um, Center for Community College Partnerships, and um they really emphasize the need for representation of people of color and definitely try to elevate and set pathways to well set uc pathways and that really that also helped me really get like that momentum and inspiration to continue and that was like the first push that i had to even think about pursuing a phd um program so that's why um it was very interesting to like really find like my passions and find the skills that i needed at the community college to like really be in this position that i am today i feel like i really at the end of it all i wouldn't be here without the people who have supported me which is like my family and professors and faculty members even to this day it definitely our our family and our mentors are always a big contributor to our success. I'd love to know a little bit about why you chose UC San Diego. You talked a little bit earlier about the program you were in with UCLA, and I imagine UCLA was aspiring that you would go to their institution. And um, it says here in my notes that you were also accepted to UC Berkeley. So you came here. What was it about UC San Diego? Um, I think you could kind of blame Gerardo from the Rasa Resource Centro. He, um, I met him at the Transfer Trident Day, and he was pushing me to go to Berkeley because I told him. He was like, he was really pushing me to go over there, and then I was like, but it, but it was funny because he told me this whole pitch of what the Rasa Resource Centro does, and it sounded really good, and I was like, why would I want to go there if there's the Rasa Resource Center. Um, and that whole day, the tried and transfer day, I felt like I had like that feeling of belonging. I remember feeling like this felt right. I remember I went to Berkeley, I was like, this doesn't feel right. Like I was like, I was just like, it was too unfamiliar, I feel like. And UCSD, there was, I was already setting, setting up like my network, I was already had people to branch out, to reach out and to lean on. So um, UCSD was definitely like also far, far enough from home, but close enough to like, if they need me, I can be with my family and I wouldn't be able to do that with Berkeley. So there was those two aspects of feeling of belonging and then like also being there for my family. So ultimately I chose UCSD just because it felt right. Awesome. 
So you mentioned a little bit about Gerardo, who is our director of our Raza Resource Centro, and it sounds like he was talking to you about what the Centro offers. So as a transfer student, did you find yourself spending some time at the Centro? Um, oddly, no, because I started to lean on, on different people that helped me navigate UCSD. I met and Dr. Makiba Jones, who introduced me or or pushed me to meet Dr. Francis Contreras and Dr. F Dr. F Francis Contreras um, was my mentor for the summer. And she really like was telling us about everything about UCSD or like really not just about UCSD, but like how to navigate academia. So I was just navigating through them and leaning on them. They were answering all my questions that I had. Um, in the summer, I also met Kirk Rogers through Makiba Jones because I had her for a class and he was the TA and he's also part of the uh, education cohort. Um, and Kirk ha has also took me under his wing and really, and that's how I led, that's, and that's what led me to like, work for, for Create. And Create has also really you know, just like branched out like as a support system, I lean on so many of my supervisors and um, they give me their two cents on everything. And because I asked for it and because I always wonder, I always wanted to know what led to people being in the position that they're in. So I felt like it's always like interesting to hear that. And it's also inspiring and motivating for me. So I feel like that's what's been helpful to me, just listening to people's stories. And I feel like stories are important. So. That's why I feel like I've been leaning more on my various mentors. <laughs> it's amazing. It sounds like you found wonderful community, both with your faculty and graduate students in the education program and with CREATE. Can we talk a little bit about the Transfer Triton Hub? I know you, you did some work there. What, what is the Transfer Triton Hub and what services does, does it offer and what did you do there? So the Triton Transfer Hub, I work there as a peer coach, a transfer peer coach. And its mission ultimately is to build community, bridge transfer students into UCSD in terms of academic, social, and professional support. So we do a lot of workshops. We do a lot of events that really promote all of that. And what really we're trying to do is make sure that transfer students aren't, aren't are supported and make sure they have those feelings of belonging. Just, I feel like the transfer hub has many different like aspects of it. So there's definitely, definitely different people doing different things for the transfer students. So for example, there's like a prof professional development community. There's an incoming students community, retention and belonging committee. Those, just show how much we are trying to like make sure that all students in the transfer community are able to access all the resources available at UCSD. Because there's one thing about UCSD having these resources and then people knowing and knowing how to access these resources. So we really just focus on doing that, making sure that if students are struggling, we reach out to the basic needs hub and then to the basic needs hub, they get that support. Or um, if they're struggling with um, legal, legal documents in terms of their status at, in, in the U.S., we, we reach out to undocumented students or undocumented legal services. So we do all these things to make sure that our students know that we're, we're here to support them in the ways that we can do it. We're not necessarily the answer to everyone's problems, but we're definitely the ones who know how to get those answers and know how to get that support. Um, we also do a lot of like community building events. So we had a lot of, we had a few game nights. We had a few social mixers. We definitely tried to make sure transfers felt a sense of community, but it was still struggle because of COVID and we did what we could with what we got. So I feel like that's why uh, the transfer is so important. Um, and I, ultimately it's also, it was also a, a safe space for me. I felt like leaning on my colleagues and my supervisor and my grad assistant 
really helped me through the school year. I feel like they were the ones who also held it down for me. And um, I feel like also because I worked with them a lot, it was able to, it was, it was easier to like find that, um, it would make it was easier to I like, feel like, vulnerable with them and tell them like, oh, like today, today's not a good day. Um, but I feel like that's what is important because uh, one thing that one of my supervisors told me is that um, there's just like this thing like, oh, you're a student first, but then she reframed that thinking. She's like, oh, you're a human first and um, you got to take care of your health and ultimately like your, your mental health and all the ways that that are important that don't want to affect you in the long run. So I'm really, I really took that with me and I really appreciate learning from them and the way um, it's very really holistic and how do we treat each other. So I feel like that's what I've really enjoyed about working at the transfer hub and doing the things I do for my transfer community. Cause I feel like as much as I was able to navigate the various spaces at UCSD, so many others could use that help that I got. And I will, I'll, I love being that help. And I'll, I, and I appreciate this past school year being that support person for them. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Cause I think it's important that, you know, young scholars like yourself, you come in, you, you get the help and the support that you need, and then you're ready to help others as they're coming through the pipeline. Right. I wanted to talk a little bit about the fact that you are at UC San Diego, we are a tier one research institution, considered one of the best research institutions in the nation. I'm wondering if you had the opportunity to do any research during your time here as a transfer student. So yes, I have been able to do research. I was first able to do research with Dr. Francis Contreras in the summer program for trails in 2020. And through there, I worked over the summer and I really got like the like an, like a general understanding of how research works and how to do it. And then this past school year or this school year that just is about to wrap up, I was in the Mexican Migration Field Research Program with the sociology department under the supervision of Dr. Abigail Andrews. And then I was also in a, a McNair scholar. So a McNair scholar, you have to do research to be a scholar and um, both of those have really like set the tone of how to like really do the knit and gritty of knit, the knit and grit of all of all the the pro the whole research process. So, and then with create, I'm also a a researcher for them. So I feel like I've been able to do many projects <laughs> this past school year. It's been a lot. Um, for the one project that I just finished up was to report to the Rasa Research Center and the EDI office. And we are reporting like how students feel in terms of academic support, Latinx students specifically, in, in how they feel about academic support. And basically it's this, this report is, we're gonna showcase what students are advocating for, what they found as an issue, what found what found issues at UCSD, in terms of academia and how to better support them. We have held a few interviews and it's been helpful to report that too. And basically it's supposed to help. This report is basically important because UCSD is uh, an emerging HSI. So once, we once it becomes an HSI, it's important to know what, being a Hispanic serving institution actually is versus what it looks like. So, um, yeah, so that's that's what my research background has been. I did like three, three different projects this year. That's great. I know we're looking forward to receiving the report on the field work you did with the Latinx students to help inform our recommendations associated with becoming a serving Hispanic institution. I wanted to chat a little bit about the fact that you have been doing all this research um, since you started here. And I'm wondering how that has shaped your plans for the future. What plans for the future are you contemplating? 
I think with everything that's happened this past two years, these past two years, I do think that I will be taking a gap year. But in that gap year is for rest and recovery, but it's also a year of preparation. So this summer I'll be taking GRE courses to take the GRE tests. And then I will be applying to PhD programs in the fall. Um, and then I will still, I will, will be working for the next year until I'm, I get news from the PhD programs, if I get a get in or not. Well, I'm glad to hear you're pursuing graduate school. I think that's amazing and super awesome for you. You are graduating, correct? In about a week or so. Yeah. How are you feeling about that, Cesar? I it's been it's it feels surreal. I think that um many people have been asking me this lately and I think I always think about what the everything that's led up to this moment. And it's been one inspirational journey it's been an, it's been an inspirational journey and i really appreciate everything that's happened to that led me to this moment and it's also a thanks to like my family my support my support system at ucsd and back in la i wouldn't have made it this far without my friends that i met at ucsd already had a ucsd um it's yeah it's really a, a thanks to the people that have guided me through this moment. I feel like it shows that it's it worked out and it was it paid off and um it's definitely it's also like inspiring for like my siblings because we're all, we are all first generation like I'm kind of setting the tone for them. So it's really like showing that it's possible and um, that we do belong in universities and we are capable of doing it if we want to. And yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely mixed feelings of like, I wish I had more time, but I'm also like, it's time to go on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, that's, that's what it's been like. It's, yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you, you shared more with me, um, earlier when we spoke and and feeling a sense of pride for you. You've accomplished quite a bit, so congratulations on that. As we begin to wrap up our time together, I wonder what advice you would give to transfer students who were transferring into UC San Diego or another four-year institution. I think this, what I'm about to say is, is applicable to anywhere you go um, in any space. I I think it's always important to network. I think I think it's definitely something that will always make a new space easier to understand and navigate and just know how it functions. Um, and when I say like spaces and how they function, it's like how what are the ropes of things? Like what do we have to do to get to from point from point A to point B, and also just like information and like social capital and cultural capital. I feel like all those things are very important and meeting, meeting people, whether you like them or not, they'll, they'll tell you something that's important, whether you want to stick around or not. So uh, networking is always, I feel like is a powerful tool. Um, and it's something that can take you so far. I feel like, um, and taking me really far, I feel I I definitely have that that sense so that that I would not have done all these things if it weren't for the people that I know, and also to be compassionate towards yourselves, transfer students, especially like first generation or many students from underrepresented groups are. We always have to, I feel like we have like a sense of always trying to do the, the most, but we also have to be compassionate that we are humans and we can only do so much and not to overextend ourselves. I feel like that's an important thing too. Um, I definitely had that feeling this year of, uh, I did too much and now I'm just want to be in recovery mode. So definitely take time for yourself. 
you are people are humans first and good luck on wherever you decide to go wonderful real quick uh what was your fondest moment at uc san diego oh my fondest moment i remember meeting dr francis conteras for the first time and i had it was after like rescheduling like three four times and she's just a busy person and she we finally sat down i went to her office and the office of ed the edi office and she looked at me and she was just like oh like what are you here for what do you want to do um where do you want to go and i said oh like i just want to pick your brain about how you got to this moment i want to do research and i want to go pursue an, a, a phd and she looked at me and she was like all right let's do it and i felt so validated at that moment that <laughs> i always get emotional um <clears throat> I felt so validated that moment that um it was like super powerful and meaningful to me. <laughs> and um it really showed that I could be there in, in a position one day and be able to say that to other people and open their doors for them. Um but yeah, it was it yeah. was such a it was such a validating feeling that my works my my um all the work that I've done so far was such a it was paying off and that it was I was finally able to like show for it and be able to really just start planning for the next thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It was such a powerful feeling. I feel like yeah she saw you <laughs> yeah yeah that's lovely thank you for sharing that story with us and thank you for taking the time to chat with us today Cesar I really appreciate it thank you Frank and thank you everyone who was here <laughs>